Now, mo money, mo problems, they say. But I'd rather deal with mo money, mo problems than no money, mo problems. Because you got mo problems, we got no money, too. Hey, Ben. So let's jump into uh, the top story of the day, which is crypto manipulation. Coinbase has been shorting the crypto market, public reports indicate. Now, is this, is this news? Do people not know all this stuff? You think? I don't think a right? lot of people know, no. I mean, guys, and this is one of these things that's a little bit difficult because <sighs> they, Abdul Isa, my guy. Appreciate that super chat, man. That's good. Man, although I felt already what you were saying deep down, but hearing you say it, man, I'm freaking pumped and bullish. That's why I put a tweet on, I put a post on X. Mm -hmm. Very serious show. We can't say tweet on Twitter anymore. Yep, nope. <laughs> did, did BJ just put his own Twitter handle in the? Thing? No, so, uh, somebody else. Somebody else did it. The somebody else did it. <laughs> BJ, this is a serious show. Please don't, don't pin that. You, BJ, you can pin that. Pin that for like 10 minutes. It's a serious show. We want people to follow you. You have a very serious name. Mm hmm. But, but the point is, is that uh, a lot of people have been feeling this way. A lot of people have been sad. A lot of people have been upset. Um, but I lost my track of my, what was my point? Where was I going with that? Before I started talking about Coinbase. That, that BJ thing really threw me off. Yeah. Oh, oh, I had, I, uh, we'll, on the X minute, when we get there, I'll show you guys one of my tweets I made. People are making fun of it. They're saying, what a dummy. Because he, I said I'm more bullish than I've been in years and years and years. I am. Because I've seen this before. I've been through this before. I've experienced this before. So everyone's so bearish. And I'm saying I'm more excited. It makes me look like an idiot. It makes me look like I'm shilling crypto and just trying to get people in. No, guys. No, guys. The true people that make the money are the people that come in at the bottom. The bottom of the sentiment. You could have skipped the entire bear market in 2018. And if you would have came in at the end of 2019 or the very beginning of 2020, there wouldn't have been much difference. The price in 2018 at the bottom was 3,200. The price hovered around 6,000 for two years almost, mm -hmm. right? So true, if you got at the very bottom paying attention, you would have been really smart, but a lot of people were scared then, okay? So, um, but we all know though, guys, we all know that any, let me explain something to you, any centralized exchange, and this is why, de this is why centralized exchanges are, I don't want to call them evil, but I will actually, I'll call them evil. Centralized exchanges are evil. Binance is evil. Coinbase is evil. BitGet is evil. What do I mean by that? They're necessary evils. Right now, where they're at, they're necessary evils. I don't mean they're evil like they're bad people. I mean, centralization, we love BitGet. I'm not trying to say anything bad about them. I'm just using an example to say, I used two exchanges that I love a lot. I used Binance and I used BitGet to prove the point here that the centralized exchanges they're the antithesis of decentralization. They're, they're the antithesis of crypto. They're the antithesis of what we're trying to do here. Because when you're a centralized exchange, you're having to make a market. And when you're making a market, you're trading against people on your exchange. Mm -hmm. That's how it works, guys. So this mm -hmm. is not news. It's not like something significant. Now, the smarter ones, such as BitGet, such as Bybit, but see, Bybit is the first one, I think, that's creating this model. They have a decentralized exchange now because they understand that's where the technology goes. Who said, how can you support Binance and BitGet when you say you don't like centralized exchanges? Because right now there's not enough users and there's not enough liquidity to make these decentralized exchanges take off. So as long as we have these necessary evils, so to speak, right, we're, we're going to have people trading against the market. And that's why I say by this isn't news. But now we've got public reports by this guy. And it says Coinbase uh, is, is a publicly owned crypto exchange. I've been calling for the crypto industry and investors to unite in order to face the regulatory takeover by the SEC. Interestingly, quarterly Republic reports uh, received by Finbold, which were presented by the company, the SEC and investors, suggest that Coinbase has been shorting crypto assets through derivatives financial strategies. But it doesn't say they're doing it on their own exchange. Notice that. Mm. Does it say that anywhere on here? I don't think so. 
A short position is usually a position made against the market. Now, is this propaganda against them because the SEC is coming after them? Potentially. Bybit does uh, KYC now, though. Yeah, they do. A lot of them do, for sure. Okay. Um, let's see. Possible amounts. They have a $136.23 million hedge in shorting positions with future contracts. Guys, <laughs> let me tell you kind of what this is like. This is kind of like people attacking me because I do a short position on Bitcoin, and yet I'm telling you Bitcoin, uh, I'm pro-Bitcoin. Kind of the same thing. They're hedging with short positions, right? The, now, here's what I'd be really interested to see. What are their long positions? Because they're not saying that on here. Right. Right? Seventy point four six million, not as a hedge. Twelve point four six, not as a med, is a hedge. Uh, so there you go. On June thirtieth, twenty twenty three, Coinbase held a one hundred nineteen point six six million in possible short positions, distributed as the following. And you can see here what they were. Um, and this goes into what derivatives are. Company entered into a short position on futures contracts. Uh, let's see, they could use this tool to front. So uh, the reason news that they would be listing crypto futures because that's the big news. They're doing derivatives contracts now, right? Did you see that news? Yeah, yeah. Bullish. Now, this, this is something that's... I'm bearish on the United States right now. I'm bearish on crypto in the United States right now, not in right. price-wise, regulation-wise, until we see what happens in the election. That's when, in my opinion, might change, or they get rid of Gary Gensler. Talking about Hester Pierce taking over. It'll be amazing. We'll change Gary the Lizard's name to Hester. It, hopefully, turns out she's a girl, which would be cool because you don't know for the first year with the Lizard. Well, no, yeah. But the point is is that that's very bullish for them. But if, what they're saying here is they could front-run investors. doesn't mean they're going to. They could. Coinbase and Binance, to me, well, Coinbase is the exchange that's followed rules more than any other exchange. I believe that 100%. Binance is up there as well. But compared to a lot of FTX, compared to what Binance has done to FTX, right? So I, I think that um, when, you, when you look across the world, when you have markets and they're being made and they're being made uncentralized, they're necessary evils for right now. By the end of the next cycle, let me tell you what will happen, Tim. I'm going to predict this. Okay. Here's what's going to happen. By the end of the next cycle, we are going to be using DEXs across the board. Okay. Centralized exchanges are going to get really hurt at the end of the next cycle. And people are going to say, just like they did with FTs, adoption is here. Or back to decentralized exchanges. But then what's going to happen? The price is going to drop. We're going to go back into a bear market. And then the centralized exchanges will rise up for one last gasp. Okay. Take back over from the decentralized exchanges. People say, DEXs are dead. DEXs are dead. You know, we, got, we have a DEX aggregator coming, some DEX stuff for Bitcoin. It's all dead, right? Which we're going to, I think we're going to start doing a Bitcoin se segment every day starting tomorrow. Okay. I need, yeah. to talk to, I need to talk to Cassie about it. Um, and then we do have a Bitcoin show we're going to be doing once a week as well. I don't know if it's going to live on my channel, probably live on my channel for a while. Um, and then maybe get its own channel. It'll be me and Cassie. So she, she moved up here. She's here now. So she, she's going to be starting every day in the office on Monday, I guess. So, um, and people know that's the CEO of Bitcoin, by the way, uh, for, for reference. So the, the point is, is that, um, Dex, that will be the last gasp, right? The Dex will take over mm -hmm. and just like kind of with NFTs, you know, I, I don't know what's going to happen this cycle, but it kind of faded away in the bear market. Will they have another big run? I don't know. But I think that's the last gas test when any centralized exchange that does not move over to a at least a hybrid exchange by the end of 2025 will not survive. Mm. Wait, does it say 2025? Yeah. Yes. By the end of 2027, Seven. I would probably say. Because yeah. 26, 27 will be where they start going back up again. Well, the um, only place but, where they, I would absolutely disagree, like, I okay. agree we need it. But people are lazy is the kind of the issue, and people are fearful. Like, they're, they're new, though. They're new. It, yeah. it, it's a new, I think it's it's a lot of the new people who don't know how to use It's an ignorance, yes. and they got to learn it. Yes. So that's the big thing is you're saying you have to push adoption, which I agree, but I don't think that pedestal of adoption is held up without the education. Well, that's what Bitcoin's so, all about. 
Hell yeah. You know? I mean, no, I mean, I, I very think, serious show. Every time BJ says something serious, I'm reminded. It, I mean, it's a, I think BJ makes a good point, and it, it's one of those things like, yeah, education needs to increase. My, it's going to be interesting seeing this next bull market with the proposal, with the thought that we're going to get the BlackRock ETF, with the, the ARK Invest ETF. You're going to have traditional investors going that route. It's going to $28,000 right now. Yeah, it, it actually dropped a little bit below it briefly. Uh, so we're wow. going to have serious traditional investors going that route, and that's avoiding centralized exchanges and, and decentralized exchanges. They're just going futures, uh, and they're going spot trading. And then you're going to have experienced traders go towards DEXs. So the question is, what happens with the noobs, the new retail right. investors? It all will boil down to education. So that's where Bencoin is. Two things, two crucial. things. It's not, just, it's not just education. It's education plus user-friendly platforms. Friend, fr yeah. friendly, friendly UI, UX, yeah. you, you know, user experience. It's got to be friendly. It's got to be friendlier than what we have now. Guys, private keys and public keys are not the way to go. That That's what should be the HTTP protocols of, of crypto to where you, you know they're back there, but you're using something different on the front end that's easier for people to understand. So this is, that, That'll be huge. Yeah.